Introducing Jibo, the world's first family robot. Say hi, Jibo. Hi, Jibo. <laughs> Jibo helps everyone out throughout their day. He's the world's best cameraman. By intelligently tracking the action around him, he can independently take video and photos so that you can put down your camera and be a part of the scene. Jibo, take the picture. Excuse me, Anne? Yes, Jibo. Melissa, just sent a reminder that she's picking you up in half an hour to go grocery shopping. Thanks, Jibo. Imagine that, 10 years ago, you'd have robots in your homes helping you with your domestic chores, or intelligent thermostats keeping you warm and comfortable, or Google's autocomplete, which is more <laughs> revealing about us humans than we are to each other. Fascinating, isn't it? You can find those videos on Nest and Jibo on YouTube and many such videos. And what about the future? 10 years from now, will we have robotic pets amongst us? <laughs> will we have human-like robots amongst us? S surgeonless surgeries? That's the Da Vinci. And driverless cars on scale? The possibilities are endless. And we are just at the beginning of this journey with artificial intelligence. It is an extremely exciting time for artificial intelligence. Our machines have gotten smarter than ever before and more powerful. They have more memory, more storage, more connectivity. And more than anything else, they have access to us humans in ways they've never had before. They can sense. They can see with their cameras, hear with their microphones, feel with touch. We even have artificial noses and artificial limbs. And they're beginning to make sense of the world around them, recognize what they're seeing, understand what they're hearing. It's fascinating. But how many of us here really know that we are all responsible for making them a bit smarter every day? We tell them everything about us. We tell them who we are, where we go, who our friends are. We tell them everything about us. That's 200,000 photos every minute on Instagram. Every minute. Two and a half million pieces of content on Facebook every single minute. And they stopped being just machines now. They started becoming our friends our peers, our companions, that keep us company late into the night, long after everyone else has gone to bed. And whether we like to admit it or not, we're addicted to them. But interestingly, they are just as addicted to us. All those notifications on your phone, asking you to message someone, respond to an email, you know, look at that Facebook post somebody just did, that's them being addicted to us. <laughs> they've shown us so much about the world. They've given us access. And in turn, we've opened up our world to them. Now, as a founder of an artificial intelligence and a computer vision startup called Math Street Den, I am constantly occupied with the question of how to make AI a bit more meaningful to people. How can I use AI to bring a bit of joy, a little fun in someone's life? Now, technology for the longest time has been obsessed with the question of productivity and efficiency, all about making our lives faster, 
giving us instant access. Look where that's gotten us. We've sped up our lives while simultaneously emptying it. Well, at Matt Street Den, we're experimenting constantly to try and see how to bring a little bit of magic into someone's lives. Well, now let me take an example, something that most of you, this audience especially, is going to be able to relate to. How many of you out here have been out there with a friend at a wedding or a party and seen someone wearing something that you absolutely must have? <laughs> so you took your phone out, took a picture of what they were wearing, stored it on your phone, you probably pinned it on Pinterest, WhatsApped it to a friend, and you hoped to go back home and find it online, but you were too disappointed that you couldn't. Let us take the example of how AI can solve that for you. is Visual Search and Recommendations by Mastery Den. Now, how many of us here really know that AI can do a lot more than just automate everything? The power of AI is actually in helping revealing things about us we ourselves did not know. Well, some days I'm all about pink polka dotted dresses. Some other days, I'm about earthy green Indian clothes. Now, how many of us here can look across those two seemingly disparate colors, patterns, clothing, and explain to someone what is the connection between those two things or why we like them? AI can do that. It can look across tens of thousands of choices we've made, clothes we've bought, we've liked, shared with someone, and it pulls out the visual similarities across those different outfits and explain those connections, but it can also predict and help me see exactly the kinds of clothing that I like when I shop. Well, let's take another example this time, something closer to my heart this time. This one is on emotion recognition. Smile. Oh. Smile. Good job. <laughs> Press the green arrow. See, it doesn't think you're smiling. Can you smile? Nicely. E. There you go. It says perfect. Touch the green arrow. No good surprises. Good job, baby. <laughs> press, the, press the green arrow. Angry. Angry. Ah, oh, Very good. Good job. Next. Scared. Very good. Scared. Yeah. And it started to cry. Yeah. What's next? That is my five-year-old daughter, Aditi. And when my husband, my co-founder, Anand, and I were taking this video of her and getting her to interact with this simple prototype that we'd made using emotion recognition. It was a moment of sheer magic for her. She was three, three and a half at that point. That phone had stopped being a piece of rock, like a brick. It came alive. It became like a living being for her that recognized her emotion, interacted back with her. Can you imagine what kind of magic that is for a three-year-old? Well, as a mother of two, I watch my children grow every day. I have a 10-month-old and now a 5-year-old. And with my 5-year-old, it's lessons on social intelligence, emotional intelligence, on manners. 
And with my 10-month-old, it's all about crawling, walking, talking. And it is an intense journey, raising a human child. But often, I am reminded that we are in a very similar relationship with our machines. We just don't know it. We're like their parents, constantly feeding them more and more about the world, everything they live in. And they're like our children, absorbing the world, everything around them, and making sense of it. Now, in this journey, we as humans have a lot of questions to answer. Our popular media would love for us to believe that the killer robots are coming, and they're gonna, that we need to be scared. And dystopian futures make for fantastic storytelling. But we have a lot more to be worried about. What happens when we surround ourselves with AI that just reflect who we are? What happens when we surround ourselves with AI that build these echo chambers that amplify our biases, our stereotypes? They're just reflecting everything that they see. What happens to chance, to discovery, serendipity, magic? Will we become more and more machine-like in our journey to make our machines more human-like? Well, it's not all gloom and doom with AI. The promise is exciting. But we must ask ourselves, what aspect of being human do we want to take forward with us in this journey as we evolve with our machines? We are here now. There is no going back. Thank you.